I've just watched episode one of Netflix version of Three Body Problem. And I mean, perhaps I'm just not the target audience for this TV series. Perhaps this is made for TV audiences nowadays without the patience to think something through, in which case it seems wholly suitable. For someone who's read the books, they'll get the sense that very little has been thought through here. After all, the story itself, the original trilogy, is so good that just basing a work on this foundation will lead to some sections which are good. All you have to do is copy the source material. Like, just like the opening, opening sequence, we see Yuen Jie's ultimate motivation for the things that she does in the end. This is all well and good. And yet, the sections which are globalised and internationalised bear no resemblance to the source material. There's the so-called Oxford Five, who seem to live the lives of detached, childless and rootless academics who compare starkly to the rooted, if introverted, family man that was Wan Miao in the original books. Only 13 minutes in, and we get the first scene of original writing. Two characters at a bar, and they reject the free advances of a man by telling them their exact research interests. Firstly, who in the real world talks like this? If they are scientists, why not spend some time showing this? From this they come across as obnoxious. Already the characters are alienating, unlikable. The character of Orgy. She experiences the numbers in her eyes, just like Wan Miao did, but she lives the experience without thinking it through like Wan Miao does, of working it out and deducting. Why does he have it in his eyes? There's no gradual understanding for her. Wan Miao spends time taking photographs using his skills we already know he has to work out, are they only on his eyes? Augie has none of this. We just hear that she went to a neurobiologist at one stage and asks why it's happening. We don't get to see it. She, it seems, is playing Wan Miao's heroic role, and yet she doesn't. She only experiences part of Wan Miao's horror. Because of reasons, they decide to give the game-playing role to another person. This was another reason for our empathy and curiosity in going along the journey with Wan Miao. This has been taken away, deducted. Around 34 minutes in, and we get some more original material. The history of Ye Wenjie and Bai Munin. Now, in the original trilogy, this betrayal is hinted at. He gives her a book, Silent Spring. It seems that he gets her into trouble somehow, but this is all off screen. We don't get to see it explicitly shown. The relationship is grey. We never know why he betrayed her, even if he did. Yet here, that betrayal is made explicit. And also, we don't get to know if they really did have a close relationship, they just seem to be acquaintances. And yet in here, in this TV series, their relationship is made explicit. By this choice of writing, Ye wen is given more of a reason for her betrayal. She has be been betrayed by people she trusted twice. It takes away the entire plot of her relationship with Yang Wei-ning and her eventual betrayal of him. And he, she has a child with him. It makes her seem completely justified in what she did in this TV series so far. Despite the fact that in the book she is given a chance at rehabilitation and a life after her terrible ordeal as a youngster through the love of a dependable partner. And she chooses betrayal. I haven't even mentioned yet how we are shown Yuen Jie's daughter from whom we do not know yet, but we know it's not Yang Wenning, which it was in the book, and how she ends her life. 
Our empathetic response is non-existent at this horrifying end because we know nothing of her yet. Now, of course, this is shown in the original books and Tencent series, but we're not shown how it happens. We're just shown the aftermath. The horror of her suicide is left to the imagination and worked out gradually as to why it happened. Here, we're shown how it happens. Why would we care? Then there is Jin Chung's character. She goes for some reason to the mother of her dead colleague, for no apparent reason, other than the fact that she's her dead colleague's mother, and is given the headset by Yu and Jie playing dumb. Obviously, she is to play this aspect of Wan Miao's role. This divides up Wan Miao's hero's journey to such an extent that every character seems weak and feeble in comparison to him. Wan Miao in the original book series faces down the numbers in his eyes and works out the mystery of the game. We go along that journey with him. By doing this, our curiosity is engaged and we are forced to work things out with him. It gave the viewer space to work out things along with Wan Miao, to think for ourselves, to set up character. What can I say at this stage about Jin Cheng and Oggy? I have nothing to say about them, apart from their specific research areas, which they thankfully told us in the scene in the bar. And yet I am meant to care for them about their experiences in playing a game and seeing numbers. By the end of the very first episode, we already see the universe flickering. This was perhaps a third of the way through the book, and by this stage we as readers have had to think, ponder, and examine why and how he had the numbers projected onto his eyes. We had to wait for the universe to flicker. There was tension in that wait, as he could not believe it was happening. And that was part of the surprise when it did happen. To have this happen by the end of episode one means we have no suspense, no anticipation for the event. It's just shown to one and all. In the book, this is an experience solely experienced by Wan Miao. This takes away from the horror of the event that happens for Wan Miao. As everyone is seeing it, it's a shared experience. It's not so horrifying for anyone to have to carry it by themselves as a burden. If you are going to change it, make it good. If not, stick to what is known. The books were already good. Why change so much? At what point does something based on a book become not the book?